Hey guys, this is Chaos Fever Tape, and today you join me for episode 6 of Rescaled Kerbin Project Moon. And today we are sending three men to orbit the moon, not to the surface today, that will be soon. Although I have actually started working on that, um, and have almost finished that project, because I need to pre-record things because I'm going to Mexico in about half a week. This will probably go up the day before I go to Mexico. But anyway, what you see here is a Falcon Heavy type setup, um, because it's kind of got two liquid fuel boosters that feed into the middle tank and do their flying and has a fuck ton of engines, a metric fuck ton of engines on the bottom there. There are um, five engines on each of those, on, there are five engines on each um, uh, like stack and within each of those five engines there it's split into kind of four engine things so you know it's, it's two, like 60 engines and it gives you, gives me about 28 yeah, 28,500 kilonewtons of thrust, and a hell of a lot of delta V. And now I'm about to drop them. Uh, these are five meter tanks, so you see the uh, aerodynamic nose cones are made of procedural fairings, which just broke apart there because I wanted to see how cool that looked. And now we've ditched them, and we have about 2,800 delta V in this main stage to push us up to enough orbital velocity because the top stage only has about 4,200 delta V. Um, because it is very hard because I think it's about a 30 ton payload uh, to orbit with this so you know you have to have a little so it was very difficult to have my standard more delta V in the top stage so I packed more into the boosters and that was good um, but yeah we're getting some altitude now I want to put it fairly high uh, not like like because um, atmosphere ends about 100 kilometers in rescaled Kerbin um, I want to put it at about 170-ish because um, I'll be burning down a little bit and it'll just be uh, more stable and because it's simply easier to put it in a slightly higher orbit because of uh, falling back towards Earth because you uh, well, Kerbin, because because if, you're, if your uh, thrust to weight ratio isn't high enough then you'll uh, pass over your Apple apps and start falling back to Kerbin. But anyway, this stage has a large engine and four smaller engines backing it up um, to give it a little more power so I can put a little more delta V in it. Um, this whole episode is at four times time accelerate, probably maybe should have mentioned that, but uh, it kind of had to be because, um, well I wanted to leave all of it in basically. I think I've cut a tiny bit, but you know, not nothing too much. And I am still burning quite heavily upwards, uh, simply because, well, um, because I would have passed over my Apple apps and fell back to Kerbin if not. And you can see the pod uh, atop there is uh, yeah, three man pod with a little fuel tank and then a stage below that to push it out to the moon. Fairly basic sort of thing. Um, I would say similar to what I am going to use for the like for the Odyssey and the Lem, but uh, yeah, the whole spacecraft actually going out to the moon and landing will be much bigger. But anyway, we are now reaching orbital velocity. Um, and slightly undershooting on delta V, so we'll have to use a tiny bit of delta V from the stage just above, but that's okay because it's got quite a lot. It's got a very efficient engine. Uh, you can see there I need about 200 more delta V and um, only have about 100 in this stage, so the top stage will provide a little more because this does have a little bit of extra delta V, very like 50 meters. A, no, well, it probably works at about 250 meters a second extra delta V or something similar to that. Oh no, I don't know, it has a little bit extra, it's not too important. But anyway, this um, is very important generally, uh, because, um, well, the technology we're using, the launch hardware, uh, is the first kind of heavy lift type vehicle, because this is, what is this, uh, 33 tons. That's pretty heavy to orbit, much more than anything I've got to orbit for. It takes quite a bit out to the moon, very importantly, because I'm going to need, going to be needing to take a fairly hefty payload out to the moon in future and it's utilizing the well although it doesn't seem like it, it is utilizing my two-stage rockets I did in my last episode because that last episode I made a two-stage rocket which had no boosters um, so that may that means that when I do put boosters on it it does even better um, than like an awful rocket with boosters but anyway um, we now have our maneuver node set up to go to the moon. I believe that's what that uh, that maneuver node is. It's kind of skipped, and I've forgotten what I edited it because I've been kind of recording and editing and recording and editing all at once. Because, well, this has been a a lot of work. It's been. I realized this week I've like, oh crap, I've got to get two episodes done because Mexico. So this will probably be up 
as I said, kind of the day before I go to Mexico, and there'll be another one up um, while I'm in Mexico. Although there there is a possibility, fairly remote possibility, but a possibility nonetheless that there isn't internet connection enough for me literally just to get on YouTube and unprivate the video. That's all I need to do. So I mean, the chances are um, I'll be able to get all my videos up because I'm going to pre-upload them and then um, unprivate them in Mexico. So then there's still a constant stream of videos, but uh, there is there is the chance that I don't manage to do that. Um, and I'm sorry if that happens, but uh, but you know, there's something I can do. And sound has just come on, which is bad because it's at four times time accelerate. And my speakers were on, so that may have spilled a bit, but there shouldn't be any sound because it all sounds awful at four times time accelerate. And you see out of that engine, uh, it looks really cool because it's like this, well, it's actually just um, a remodel of the RCS thrust type thing. Um, but I think it looks really cool for this kind of efficient looking engine. But anyway, we are on our way to the moon, so that's um, good. This took a huge amount of time to do, but the next bit, well, there's always been kind of, for each episode I've usually done something completely different, because like I launched some satellites, and I launched some men, and I went to the moon, and I took something much bigger to the moon, I've always needed completely new launch hardware, but since I designed my first kind of two-stage rockets that probably worked without boosters, um, it's been much easier. You said you can use uh, what I was just doing there, and um, was using a zoomed-in version of the nav ball in the cockpit to fine-tune my thing. But yeah, I mean, once you kind of figured out, it's it's just like playing normal Kerbal Space Program. Once you figured out how to do something properly and efficiently, it makes it easier. So making the launch vehicle for my next bit, which is about 70 tons rather than 33 tons, was much easier. Although I'm not fully sure. It's, um, it's worked yet because I you, because it takes so long and is kind of so difficult and there are so low fucking frame rates um, that uh, I actually usually launch it first time on on recording and that's actually what I did with this failed to mention that earlier is that um I actually this was actually my first full launch I did a few I did a lot I do a lot of testing I test everything I even test the decouplers on complex engine stacks and I make sure nothing overheats and then I make sure it takes off and doesn't explode and then I fly about two kilometers into the air and then I do it. So this was actually my first full non-test launch of this spacecraft. So uh, so yeah, I'm pretty good. Uh, no, I was very proud of that though. And you can see the satellites go nuts. Um, but yeah, uh, so this is kind of, it's looking pretty good. I have a uh, you can see with that extra burn, I still have 24 meters a second left in the stage to go out to the moon. And there I'm just planning. I rarely leave my planning in, so I actually left it in this time. And what I did there was I planned the circularization, and now I'm just um, adjusting um, a future plan to get back to Kerbin to make sure um, I have enough delta V, which I do, because I need about 1500 um, in the actual capsule stage. Um, and I have about 1600, so that's good. But anyway, let's get Jebediah Kerbin out, just very briefly, because, well, I've been doing this for a very long time. This took me about, I did this yesterday, actually, and now I'm already working on the next bit, because usually I leave it a bit, because I like to kind of have a little space in between. It makes me feel like I've been doing the project longer, but then I kind of poorly timed this. Um, but yeah, now, next episode will be uh, actually landing on the moon. Spoilers, yeah, whatever, who cares. Um, and then the episode after that, well, no, there won't be an episode after that for a while. Um, I don't, I'm not sure, but I think when I get back, I might record just basically the same thing, but taking a buggy out. I'm not entirely sure, but there will be various other videos. This is basically, so, um, I mean, there, what this, there'll only be two more episodes of this, um, in the next two weeks because that's basically where the series ends but I might do a little extra one where I take a buggy kind of like Apollo 12 or something um, but yeah that was the circularization happened very quickly because four times time I accelerate and stuff I think I've left all of this at four times time accelerate just because you know um, it was it, yeah it was a long mission and I wanted to leave all of it in and you may notice that um, this is actually I mean, it would have been much easier to do this with a nuclear engine, but I decided not to use a nuclear engine. Um, partly because I think it would have actually possibly been heavier if I'd used a nuclear engine, because nuclear engines are hugely heavy, and I didn't actually need that much fuel anyway. But um, also, this provided more thrust, and um, 
and it's more impressive to not do it with a nuclear engine. Although I have used one for the because this is my Odyssey spacecraft because that's the name of the one that went to the moon in real life. Um, and then uh, I think it's Odyssey, maybe, maybe not, maybe I've named it terribly. But um, on the Odyssey Mark II, which takes the LEM out, the Lunar Excursion Module, the lander, um, that uses a nuclear engine because I needed more delta V, and I the, basically um, the idea was to keep the mass down as much as possible. So I've had to develop a 70-ton launch vehicle, which is more powerful than Falcon 9. No, not Falcon 9. Falcon Heavy, which is a 53-ton lifter at maximum. Um, and yeah, uh, so that was pretty good. I don't think it's quite as powerful as Saturn V itself, but. Uh, you know, I am not Werder von Braun. I am only Elon Musk. That would be awesome. Elon Musk is my hero. He is the most awesome person. He's basically... Oh, and right now, that's a drogue shoot. I'm just basically dropping the pressure where it opens and increasing the um, uh, height where it opens, just basically, um, because I'm going to be coming back at about 11, 1100 meters a second. And because I have ferrum aerospace, that hits me as I ditch it, and we start to burn. That was, as I was saying, Elon Musk is basically Henry Ford, Werner von Braun, um, Bill Gates, all rolled into one. He's just awesome. Um, if you don't know about him, look him up. I probably shouldn't talk about him. But anyway, we bled off that velocity fairly fast because we hit the atmosphere very hard. Too hard, actually. If it was deadly reentry, nothing would protect us. Except maybe a huge heat shield that would be modded by probably me. I don't think anyone makes heat shields for this. But anyway, the parachutes have gone and we're slowing very nicely. Possibly too much, so this takes a little while to get to the ground. But it's a four times time accelerate for you guys, so it's fine. Um, it is in the dark, but it was illuminated by fire, so everything's good. Pretty crowded UI. I'm not sure. Oh no, my mods video will go up a little after this, where I talk about my crowded UI and talk about all the mods I use. It's a 15 minute video because I use so many mods, especially for this series. But anyway, there is the final parachute's gone. And we're about to touch down, which brings us to the end of the episode. We now have splashed down, and we are back from the moon. Next episode, we will hopefully be landing on the moon. I am as clueless as you at this point. I don't know that it'll work. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, consider leaving a like. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.